Hello, Jam and Thrive kids and parents. I am Miss Christine, and I am so excited you are joining me for day 14 of the Red Letter Challenge for Kids. Um, when we can't meet physically together in Jam and Thrive, this is our next best alternative so that we can continue to learn about Jesus throughout this time right there in your homes. So our reading today is from John chapter 8, verse 7. If you want to, you can get out your Bibles and read along with me. Again, that's John chapter 8, verse 7. It says, When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. So do you guys know what the most famous verse of the Bible is? You guys can shout it out if you think you know it. It's John 3.16, and it basically covers what the entire gospel is in one verse, which is amazing. Now, we're going to play a little bit of a game. If you want to, get out your Bibles to John 3.16. And what we're going to do is play a little game. I'm going to say parts of the word of words of the verses, and you are going to fill in the blanks by reading what this verse says. And if you know this verse by heart, you can just um, say those words out loud. All right, let's try it. For God so, okay, so you should have said loved. If you did, you are on the right track with this game. All right, now I'll start over. For God so, the, that he, his only, his one and only, that whoever in him shall not, but have, Awesome. I hope you did well with that. Um, I'm going to read the whole verse so you know what I was saying that whole time. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not die but have eternal life. Whew. What an amazing verse. You can tell why it's the most famous of all the verses in the Bible. But there's a really important verse that happens right after John 3.16, which is John 3.17. I'm going to read that for you too. It says, for God did not send his, son, send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Condemn means to give someone a punishment, sometimes a really harsh punishment like death. But as this verse says, God sent Jesus to save the world, not to condemn it. And that's really good news. All right, so now I'm going to ask you guys to do a little activity with me. Get out a sheet of paper and a pencil or a marker or a pen, something to write with. Okay, so a paper and something to write with. You can pause the video and go and find, go and find those things. All right, now what I want you to do is imagine or draw a circle on that sheet of paper, okay? So draw a big circle, I'll wait. And now I want you to draw an emoji in the circle to show how you think God feels when he looks at you. I know that you guys know what emojis are, but in case you don't, it's like those uh, faces that show emotion. So there are frowny ones like that. There are really happy ones like this. Just draw an emoji. What do you think God feels when he looks at you? So draw that in your circle. Draw what God would be feeling when he looks at you. What emoji would he have? You can pause the video and draw your emoji. You know, sometimes we have the idea that God is out to get us or that he's always angry at us. Maybe you think he hates someone like you because you've messed up. As a result, you might not want to come to church or talk to God because you're afraid he wants to punish you. But God is there to listen, to forgive, and to help you turn from sin. He came to save you, not condemn you. In Jesus' time, did you know that one of the ways people were punished for breaking an important rule or law was stoning? A crowd would gather around the accused person and hurl rocks at them until they hurt or were even dead. It was an extremely harsh punishment. In John 8, 2 through 11, some people circled a woman who had committed a sin, and they were ready to hurl stones at her. But Jesus told them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. This stopped them in their tracks. The people knew deep down that they too were sinners. So one by one, they dropped their rocks and walked away. When you sin, the devil will try, will try to accuse you too. You might even feel as if the devil's accusations are like stones being hurled at you. 
The devil's accusations may not hurt your body on the outside like stones would, but they can hurt the inside. Jesus, the only perfect person ever, defends us against the devil. Jesus died for all the sins of every man and woman who has ever lived, is living, and will ever live. Jesus is like our bodyguard, right? When he died for our sins, it's like he stepped in front of the stones being thrown at us. He took our punishment for us. Jesus is our rock, is our rock of safety, right? He's given us that safety of forgiveness. So I want you guys to check out these verses together as a family, and then I want you to write down how they describe God. I'll actually be putting a kind of worksheet um, in the Google Drive for your parents. So if you want to print that out, um, you can do that. If not, you can just listen to me um, and I'll give you the verse. And then I want you guys to either discuss or write down how each verse describes God. So the first verse is Genesis 49 verse 24. So you can look that up and talk about how does it describe God. The next verse is Deuteronomy 32 verse 4. Again, you can write that down and see how it describes God. The next verse is 2 Samuel 22, verse 2. Then there's Psalm 18, verse 2. And finally, it's Psalm 19, verse 14. Sorry, there's two more. And then Psalm 92, verse 15. And Isaiah 26, verse 4. Again, I'll have a little worksheet in the Google Drive that your parents can access to if you didn't get to write those down. But look up those verses. Um, that's my challenge to you. And talk about it. Talk about how they describe who God is. Um, our God is a God of forgiveness, and he has forgiven you, which means that you can forgive everyone around you. Um, and that is such an amazing gift. So we're going to end this time by praying together. Um, would you repeat the prayer after me? So I'm going to pray something and you can pray it back. Dear Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for your forgiveness that you want on the cross. Help keep us safe and healthy. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for spending some time today. Um, I really loved spending this time with you, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.